So, yeah, good morning, everyone. Um, thank you so much for uh, uh, having this space in the conference. I really appreciate the invite. For uh, people that doesn't know me, my name is uh, Mateo Santos. I'm a product manager at the Wikimedia Foundation. Some of you uh, already saw me on the North America edition of this conference. It's the first time that I'm uh, on the European one. And uh, although I was an engineering uh, and in the Community Foundation since 2018. I am a product manager for the past uh, year and a half, more or less. And um, yeah, that's such an impactful uh, title, uh, but uh, please don't be afraid. I just want to talk about uh, the work that we have been doing uh, because there has been a shift on uh, how we see MediaWiki. And when I'm talking about MediaWiki here, I'm talking about MediaWiki core and core extensions um, as uh, they're mostly what I, uh, I need to be concerned about at the Wikimedia Foundation. And uh, let's dive in because uh, what I want to talk about is that MediaWiki, all of you not, may know, uh, but for the ones that are newer or, or older, we're still always finding new documentation um, in, in, in MediaWiki. Um, but if you go on, uh, on the manual, what is MediaWiki? A uh, description of that is that we, uh, it's a platform that allows Wikipedia and other projects to function, needs ongoing support <coughs> and evolution to uh, support the creation, moderation, storage, discovery, and consumption of open multilingual content at scale while protecting the privacy of its users. And the question driving us um, uh, in the Media Week Engineering Group is how do we sustain this platform for the future? How do we evolve it to meet uh, the needs of diverse users uh, while still supporting the Wikimedia's mission? And uh, uh, so yeah, when I share this slide, this is a link you can you can access to, to the documentation. Uh, but for this presentation, I want to elaborate this concept of uh, sustainability because uh, we need to do that while the world is changing. And uh, it's changing because uh, content consumption is changing, which affects uh, how uh, the, uh, the Wikimedia projects needs to function, but also is going to change a lot faster with generative AI and other technologies that uh, uh, we are seeing uh, come into the world. And um, this is just, this isn't just a trend we're observing. It, it actively informs um, the platform mission and uh, if we need to stay relevant, uh, um, we need to adapt expectations and, and change with it. Um, and that's why um, if we're going to look at the, the platform mission here, I think it's, uh, um, if, if, you're, if you haven't seen that, um, basically what MediaWiki core and its core extensions are aiming to do is a well-defined, secure, performant, core platform product that offers created pathways, aka APIs, to enable volunteer-powered multilingual consumption and offer the platform at scale. You see that I'm repeating a lot of uh, words here, and uh, it is intentional because uh, uh, we really need to do that. I'm, I'm, I'm highlighting at scale again, um, mostly because uh, MediaWiki, for the Wikimedia Foundation mission, needs to support and scale for more than 25 billion global page views per month, um, more than 50 million edits per month. So the content is open and accessible for hundreds of languages. And we need to do that still keeping a large collaborative contributor base. We, be, otherwise we wouldn't be here, right? Um, and uh, supporting all of this scale sustainably is a key challenge and a priority for our team. And that's the shift that I want to talk about. That's the change that I want to talk about. Investing in MediaWiki for us now and, and, and the developer experience around MediaWiki means that we are going from project to product. One year and a half ago, um, the, the foundation um, started, uh, the foundation leadership acknowledged that shift and uh, I want to do a quick recap. Some of you that uh, might have seen the, the North America edition uh, presentations from Brigitte, which is way better than uh, uh, what I'm going to do here. Um, uh, already saw some of it, but uh, on the first year of our work, uh, we established this product leadership and a new engineering group for MediaWiki. It means that now we have 
inside the foundation, uh, three groups that are focusing on how we're going to evolve MediaWiki uh, moving forward. Uh, we created a high level product strategy, uh, which is very important. Uh, after two decades, it was the first time that the Wikimedia was investing on, uh, on such a strategy. And we set major focus on platform sustainability, right? Because for us, we had a few key points like the infrastructure management for MediaWiki in Kubernetes. Um, I, I believe there are people in the room that did that before we did. And uh, I really acknowledge that. And for us, it was important. We have the Parse Unification uh, uh, project, which uh, some of you might already know, especially if you were working with Semantic MediaWiki. And uh, we focus a lot on contributor growth as well. And in the end, the, the, the goal was to uh, open, see the open questions um, and, and start resolving them. So from release to stewardship across, uh, we have like uh, uh, dozens of uh, production extensions in, 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 in our infrastructure and uh, we still need to discuss how we can sustainably maintain and evolve them. All of that led to uh, different product focus areas um, and it's marked as V2 because there's a slight change since the last time you presented that um, but basically those four areas are sustainability which is the one that I'm I am responsible as a product manager um, so increasing the sustainability of the MediaWiki platform which involves a social uh, problem as well as an engineering problem is uh, as important to ensure that we serve as well and the essential platform for MediaWiki and other key needs. Um, and release is part of this and it's our commitment to open source. Um, core capabilities and concepts is about evolving the architecture um, of, the, of the core software to meet the current needs and, and future needs of uh, open knowledge. Um, and especially in production and in, in encyclopedic content. Creative pathways define and evolve the pathways to expand and customize MediaWiki to clarify and streamline feature development, which I think it's a lot what you do um, and well related to that. And uh, the new addition, and that's why it's V2, is that we uh, are also uh, now prioritizing in our group the design system uh, so we can have MediaWiki like, comprehensive and reusable uh, so it, it can view like uh, different front ends on the platform. And in the previous conference, I'd like to acknowledge that we had a presentation about Codex, which is the main project behind this effort. And those areas, uh, they are the strategic framework that we chose to guide everything we are doing, um, especially the challenges that we have had. So when I talk about challenges, this is a dependency graph of first level namespaces in MediaWiki and is daunting. And Pretty sure much of you spend a lot of time debugging uh, MediaWiki uh, when you need to solve a problem. And uh, there are many reasons for that, but MediaWiki is large, it's a monolith code base, and the system is entangled. Um, and understanding the system behavior is super hard. Making code changes is super hard, and onboarding people is harder. So that's why, as I mentioned, uh, we focus on contributor growth. We are, we are trying to expand the, the, the platform and, and try to understand what can change the architecture moving forward. And that, that there are some systemic views on the platform that we shared with you and want to share as well. Um, so one that I just want to highlight again is uh, uh, there is a blog post from Morial, um, for, uh, which is a staff on the Wikimedia Foundation. Uh, about unraveling the complexity of MediaWiki and mapping components. Um, this is a very interesting uh, um, um, read if you want to look at the report and it is related to our first year. Um, on the second year, we already have another report uh, to inform how the uh, hook, so we did a hook survey uh, in order to understand how hook can, uh, the hook system can change so we can simplify feature development which will um, um, I think be important for extensions um, and especially uh, developers uh, working on extensions. And another tool that is super interesting and you might want to look at is Huma, which is, uh, a, it's basically a tool so we can query the code base and look for a complexity analysis. And we are, all of these are research, like sneak peeking to what we are researching and there is a lot to unpack from uh, uh, the, the insights that we're going to have across the year. 
but still, with those uh, researching that we have been, with this research that we've been doing, I can still talk about some key initiatives, which is in the title and the reason that I uh, am here as well, um, because there are six. Uh, in, uh, six initiatives that I, I, I think would be interesting to share with you, uh, although we have many more. If you are interested, we can for sure share a link about our annual planning and uh, our goals for, for our, our year. But uh, for now, I want to talk about some of priorities. And one I think that is very important to, to acknowledge is uh, release management. So for the first time, this group is uh, responsible for releasing management uh, moving forward. And we're close to the 1.43 release, which is going to be a long-term support. Um, and uh, this is a QR code, but I'll also be around and I can share the link for uh, a, a form that I'm yet to finish. Uh, mm -hmm. So I can uh, collect the, the right answers. Um, but basically what I want to do is Make sure that I have a place to talk with you. Um, and if you have any feedback or experience with, I don't know, maybe you're testing the alpha branch on 1.43, but you might as well be, um, uh, you might have questions or suggestions for releases moving forward. And we, this is important commitment of, of, of ours. Um, another important um, intervention we are doing or a project is the parcel unification project. So as of now, you might have no parcel <coughs> exists for a, a decade or so. And uh, we have been doing some effort on reducing the amount of uh, uh, legacy, uh, the amount of parcels we have in MediaWiki. So we have the legacy parts, we have parcel. And in the roadmap right now, we, we have successfully rolled out parcel as a read views option uh, of parsing for the wiki voyages and has been a super important project. We learned a lot from it. One of the learnings that we had is Parsoid is, uh, is gonna be ready for most of the wikis that we have. Even some Wikipedias right now could be uh, transitioning to, to Parsoid, although it's going to be a very uh, slow and, and, and sensitive change. And uh, we are, so for that, we are, we are still looking, uh, we are doing a step back we're going to roll out to incubator wikis and every new wiki created in the Wikimedia uh, Foundation ecosystem will have Parsoid. And, uh, but still, we are very confident that Parsoid will be the, the full read views for uh, the Wikimedia Foundation wikis. And that's what we are focusing now. Next, it's not, it, we can only say that we are done with, the, uh, with the, the unification process once we migrate bots, gadgets, and user scripts to use Parsoid. And then there is, uh, I think it will be a, a wild journey to remove the dependency on the legacy parser and then finally remove it from MediaWiki core. What that means is still unknown for us and also a little bit further uh, on the timeline because now and next and later can mean many things here, especially with the complexity uh, of this change. Um, but our main commitment is to make sure that we can do that before the next LTS release. And uh, another one that's coming up is automated API docs uh, with localization. Um, as you know, we make a great effort for MediaWiki to support every language in the planet. And um, we now also, so you are were, you were aware of the MediaWiki uh, API system, but we have been also investing on REST APIs in MediaWiki. And uh, that, by doing this, it means that there's a lot of things that we didn't have that the MediaWiki API has. Um, automated API docs is one example. And uh, this is just a, a way for documentation to be interactive and, and support uh, as use case. So if you have an extension and you are leveraging the REST framework of MediaWiki, um, this is going to benefit you uh, at some level. And I'm going to talk about six uh, initiatives. This is the third one. So uh, Parasoid is a very key uh, platform feature that we uh, are considering right now. And one of the things that we have been doing and we know that we cannot fully finish the completion of the work if we do not assess some performance hits that Parasoid will have in comparison to the legacy parser. And we are also exploring this, which will it basically means that uh, we are uh, Parasoid will uh, 
start seeing the wiki page as a structure of fragments. It will be different, uh, a different take on uh, what Parsify thinks or how we're going to parse a page. And a, 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 I think a simple example here is when a template is ad edited, it means that we need to refresh all pages in our infrastructure that had that template. So depending on the template, it's uh, like thousands and thousands of pages. Uh, which is, in a, is an infrastructure burden. And uh, one exploration that we are doing right now is that we are just going to change and update pieces of the page based on a template change. So this is uh, one thing that we consider very important because uh, it is the goal is to support the current use cases, but also there are many things in terms of evolution of wiki text that are related to that change. Um, which is the main way that people communicate in the wikis, right, for, for us. And I talked about the hook survey. Uh, basically, we want to simplify feature development. Onboarding is, uh, it comes with a lot of cost on MediaWiki. And uh, so there is the report. I'm, we want to reinforce, please. Uh, if you want to learn uh, the same things that we learned uh, from, from the survey about how extensions uh, um, need or the needs of extensions on, about what core needs to support um, uh, it, it's a very uh, I think insightful read um, I don't I, I, I'm not going to go deep on that because because we have another product manager in the foundation that is uh, leading uh, that effort but basically um, the next step based on the survey that we are approaching is how we can make uh, we can explore a domain event and, and listen pattern in MediaWiki core, which is uh, a new thing that uh, we're planning for hooks. Um, and so, yeah, I mentioned some of those, as I, uh, uh, as I mentioned before, are related to uh, a strategic framework or product focus areas, some about sustainability, some about uh, created pathways, um, but all of them are cross-cutting. So it, it, because of the nature of MediaWiki, it's, it's impossible to say, I'm going to just work on that API or that interface without affecting the sustainability. But in the end, they all come from this framework and, and they, they are all collaborative efforts across the groups. Um, and one important work that we are also doing is uh, the authentication stack with single user login phase three. Um, this is uh, from my, uh, at least the, the, the research that I did before the presentation, this would only impact uh, people that are using central valve. So maybe Wikitide and, and Mirahees, uh, but I, I believe there are others. Um, yet, this is the groundwork for an enhancements on the central wall. So we're going to uh, split it so we can have a better um, um, authentication stack to serve uh, that Wikimedia will be supporting and maybe can support other user cases in the future. However, before we do that, the, we need to do that, the, uh, the current change on, on, on how, we, uh, how the, the central wall extension functions so we can uh, be less dependent on browser or vendors' decisions on when they decide to, to change in the future, especially in cross-domain authentication. And with that, uh, I want to thank you all for listening. Um, and one of the things that uh, I want to acknowledge here is that MediaWiki is only possible because there is a collaborative effort um, behind it. And uh, and when I mentioned that we focus on contributor growth and we were successful and uh, before the presentation, I just want to say that it keep growing. It's keep gr so the changes that we are doing are, are bringing more people to, to MediaWiki and making it easier to contribute to MediaWiki. So I hope uh, we are on the right track. Um, if you are interested on monthly updates about MediaWiki, uh, we you you might want to uh, if you are not on MediaWiki L uh, um, uh, email list, you can also go to MediaWiki.org on that specific page and uh, watch it for uh, any updates. Thank you very much.
That's a good question. Um, I can say that I even thought about shortening. Um, and uh, there are many reasons for, for uh, changes that we can do on, 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 on the release process. One of the things that we have been focusing on the, the current fiscal year was one pain point that we have in terms of infrastructure is um, updating in sync with PHP upgrades, right? So uh, we want to fix that problem first and we might want to be on par of what PHP, uh, how PHP evolves. So MediaWiki can always be using the latest of the language. Um, is increasing the LTS support is a sensitive thing. And one of the things that I, I forgot to mention in the presentation, but uh, on the one of three release, because we have a product perspective now, we worked on, or we did some support for the the math community behind the math extension so they can accelerate the, the work to use MathML rendering in native browsers because that will change how we have our math rendering infrastructure. Um, and uh, if we have, if we're doing infrastructure changes and having to support them for every three years, this, this seems like already an ideal case. And it, we could even shorten it, it depending on the uh, on the on the situation, um, but I'm I'm very uh, I'm very open to understand how release affect you all, and uh, if the the LTS release right now is 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 good enough, um, if you have any any concerns, because after we do the release, we, we can only have security updates, right? And um, one this is uh, one of the things that uh, I have in mind, so. Although I don't have a direct answer to are we going to expand, I can say that we I am thinking about it and, and, and it can change, um, but it's going to be uh, aligned with product decisions from now on. At least that's the plan. Okay. Thank you, Jeffrey. All right, um, before I move on to my next question, I just want to say thank you so much for everyone at the Wikimedia Foundation who is working so tirelessly to um, not only deliver their work for the Wikimedia Foundation, but also to then spend the time to branch out, you know, stable releases to us and even give us LTS support. You know, someone who works as a developer, I can only imagine the struggle it would be to be told, hey, by the way, while you're doing your work, fix some releases, you gotta branch those out too. It's really tough work, and so I'm really glad we're having this conversation, but I first wanted to give my appreciation. On to my question, um, so, you mentioned WebAuthn at the end of your presentation. That got me excited. Um, and for those of you who don't know what that means, um, they're passkeys. And you might be using passkeys already on Google, on Amazon. Um, and basically, it's a way to get rid of your password. And it's more phishing resistant, and it's all around more secure. Um, I personally love passkeys. And I'm wondering uh, if the Wikimedia Foundation has an active effort right now to uh, have WMF developers work on you know, adding passkey support as like an extension or even as core functionality to uh, MediaWiki, or if this is something that the community should take the helm for? That's a good question. Um, so I think that my first answer is community is always welcome to get involved with the development of MediaWiki. Um, but uh, it is on our backlog. It is a tentative backlog. The reason that I'm saying um, that I, I, the reason that I'm saying that is because uh, we have a commitment to user privacy and user secure uh, uh, sec uh, security, right? So um, this is something that we want to do, and the work that we're doing now is to allow this to happen at some point. Um, understanding so looking at when this might happen, it's a little bit more difficult here. Um, especially because our, we have other things in mind or other problems to resolve. One example that I'll, ha I'll have, which is, uh, um, it, it is a work from a specific team on the Wikimedia Foundation, is that temporary accounts or being able to provide people to access MediaWiki and still keep their privacy are like a higher, higher priority. And also the work that we are doing on the single user login phase three is to allow that to happen now as a most pressing issue. And uh, definitely you want to improve that uh, moving forward. So we are going to, to be there at, at some point um, and we are always open to talk with community about when or how. Thank you for your talk. Um, 
I was wondering, later on you're planning, you said, removing legacy parser support before the next LTS release. Would that be the 1.43 LTS release or the 1.47? So, no, sorry, yeah, not 1.43. The next, I'm considering, yeah, I'm considering 1.43 now. So, yeah, uh, thanks for the question. And it's good to clarify, not 1.43. We are not ready for do, doing that right now. Neither are we. Yeah. <laughs> I had the same question. Thank you. <laughs> Any more questions? Do we have a question online? I don't think so. Maybe. There are, by the way, around 30 people watching online, so uh, this is why we're using the microphones all the time, but so that we can hear as well. Okay, uh, will you be uh, around for today? Uh, I'll be here until the end of the conference. Okay. Yeah, Great. please reach out. Yeah. And thanks for the online folks. Yeah. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.